Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews, and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, uh, where you ask the questions, and I do my very best uh, from my years working in the dive industry to answer your questions. So if you do have any scuba diving questions, uh, then pop them down in the comment section and use this Ask Mark hashtag for your chance to get featured in an up and coming video. Um, but I do my best to answer your questions uh, in the comment section uh, whilst you wait, um, when I have the time and the community does an awesome job at helping one another um, and myself answer questions. So if you do see any unanswered questions, um, then do help them out so they get an answer sooner rather than later. Uh, and of course, remember to subscribe to the channel here if you're new. Uh, today's question is about sack rates and more specifically shear water sack rates and a couple of subscribers asked similar questions about the shear water sack rates um, on their computers on a video that I did about transmitters last week. To put it simply, sack is your surface air consumption rate. And it's the rate of change in cylinder pressure that's normalized to the pressure at sea level, because um, otherwise you have to input the depth as well. Uh, so we just keep it at surface pressures. So you'll get a sack rate which is like x bar or psi per minute that's how many bar or how many psi you breathe per minute as if you were at sea level at just one atmosphere the analog way to work out your sack rate is to go on a dive um, you then reach a set depth usually like send up a buoy so that you make sure you're staying at a set depth uh, otherwise it makes the calculations complicated and right at the beginning, you make a note of your cylinder pressure. You then start a timer and you swim around at that given depth for a certain amount of time. It's usually like 10 minutes at 10 meters, just to make the maths easy to do. And then at the end of that 10 minutes, you record your new gas pressure. And then using this formula, you can work out how much gas that you've breathed over that given period um, converted to the surface. The less that you breathe, the smaller the number. Uh, the more that you breathe, the bigger the number. So it can be good, or it can be a good way to like track how your breathing rate changes over time and in different circumstances as well. Uh, if you have a transmitter though, most computers paired to a transmitter will do all of these calculations on the go for you whilst you're in the water. You don't have to get your pencil, um, that they just kind of do it. They base their calculations based on, or at least shear water computers, um, base their calculations on the previous two minutes. Um, even with depth changes, you don't have to stay at a specific depth. It'll take an average. Um, it's usually the previous two minutes uh, except for the first like 30 seconds of a dive uh, because they assume that you're going to be like adjusting your BCD or your dry suit so every time that the it registers a pressure drop it might be you just inflating your uh, your BCD or your dry suit not you actually inhaling uh, so it kind of ignores the first 30 seconds of a dive at least that's how today's sponsor does it in their dive computers um, sheer water research sheer water makes a wide range of dive computers um, that have all been very well received by the diving community from the most technical divers to like entry level divers as well now and their newest computer is the peregrine tx which has wireless air integration so it can do all of these calculations and like alert you if your cylinder pressure drops below a certain level um, and the peregrine tx alone as a computer is a beautiful machine uh, with a very large color screen and wireless rechargeable battery in it so you can top it up between dives uh, right now it's one of my favorite computers and it's just perfect for most divers out there whether you're just starting your diving career uh, or you already have hundreds of dives under your weight belt uh, it's a lovely computer head over to shearwater.com to check out the peregrine tx computer and your closest shearwater dealer Now, the problem with some of these calculations, the, uh, the, the sack rate calculations, is that 10 bar or like 145 PSI from a big cylinder or twin cylinders is going to be a lot more gas volume than from a small cylinder. If you're just breathing from a pony, you're going to breathe that down relatively quickly compared to twin 12s. And 
Of course, you need to normalize it to the surface because as soon as your depth changes, uh, the amount of gas that you're inhaling changes because the gas in your lungs is now denser. So you need to inhale more of it to fill up your lungs with every breath. So unless you input the cylinder volume uh, into your equation uh, or your dive computer before the dive, um, the number is going to change. Um, so if you dive lots of different cylinder sizes, uh, you're renting cylinders, then before every dive you're going to have to input that to get the correct number. Now there also exists RMV or respiratory minute volume, uh, which as volume in the name suggests, is your breathing rate, but as the amount of volume of gas that passes through your lungs per minute. So it's gonna be like liters per minute or cubic feet per minute. But again, that requires cylinder volume uh, in the equation and Shearwater doesn't like the idea of divers making that sort of mistake before a dive, um, you having to input your cylinder volume. So Shearwater, just keep it simple and just offer you up your sack rate. Just here it is. If you want to, um, it's pretty easy to, uh, to convert it. Uh, in fact, there was a, a Reddit post um, that I read uh, probably a while ago now, uh, asking about sack rates they were confused um, as their result was um, like ridiculously high. And, um, and after like consulting people on there, um, they, they realized that they pressed the little like zero button instead of the decimal button on their calculator. So their sack rate was like through the roof, um, but they managed to whittle it down and figure out where it was in their calculations. So Shearwater just keeps it simple uh, with this sack formula. Uh, you've got the pressure at the start minus the pressure at the end on the top row. Um, so that's how many bar or PSI that you've breathed over that time. Underneath, uh, you've got the, uh, the, the end time minus the start time. So the amount of time that's elapsed. Divide that by one another and then divide the result by the average ambient pressure of the pre water pressure around you, uh, which is like your depth in atmospheres. Uh, your computer can do this throughout the dive and average it um, after the dive as well. Um, but yeah, that's the basic formula on how Shearwater does it. They've got an entire page on their um, uh, user manual, which I'm sure you've all read very thoroughly, about why they choose SAC instead of RMV and how they do the, uh, the actual formula. Um, so yeah, the, they, they explain themselves in their own user manual. Um, if you do want to work out your RMV, you can then just multiply that result by the volume of your cylinder, um, which is arguably a more practical value because you can then take that number and then work out how much gas you will need on a particular dive. If you know that you're diving to a particular depth, you want to be there for a certain amount of time, then you know that you breathe this many liters or cubic feet per minute and then you multiply that by the depth and then um, you can work out, oh, okay, well, I need this volume of gas to do that dive. How many cylinders does it take to, um, uh, to fill with this volume? And um, yeah, it tells you how many cylinders you need to bring basically. One interesting thing that I'll touch on is that she ought to use the uh, like ideal gas law uh, because when you fill cylinders above I usually say 200 bar, but I think it's like 207, but I think that's just to, uh, to equalize it with the, um, or make the maths a bit more easy with the, uh, the Imperial uh, PSI, because it's what, 3000 PSI. Um, things are less linear once you get over 200 bar. I mean, here in the UK, it's, they're not common, but you do find 300 bar cylinders, um, but to get a proper 300 bar fill, it's, it's not as good as you uh, you kind of expect. Uh, what you'll find is that at the very start of the dive, uh, when you're diving a, a high pressure cylinder, like a 300 or a 4,400 PSI, um, your sack rate is gonna be quite high just because the, the gas at that higher pressure doesn't have quite the same amount in it. So your sack rate is gonna appear quite high at the beginning because you're, you're breathing that, uh, that higher pressure down, that's gonna drop faster. And then it's gonna start settling down once you hit like 200 bar or 3000 PSI. Once you go below that, it's then gonna settle out and give you a, a more accurate um, sack rate. So if you look at the sack rate right at the beginning of the dive and it's quite high, don't worry too much um, if it's suspiciously high. Uh, if it continues, uh, you might have a slow leak or something, um, but yeah, if if you're in like the first like 
10, 15 minutes. I wouldn't worry too much if it's suspiciously high, um, but I would be like paying attention to it. Um, other, high re uh, other reasons for high sack rates are like adverse conditions, such as current. If you're swimming against moving water, then you're gonna be working harder. You're not gonna be doing this motion, but you're gonna be working harder. So you're gonna be like breathing more to, uh, to oxygenate your, your body. So that's gonna increase your sac rate. Um, if you're overweighted, if you've got too much lead on your weight belt, uh, then you're gonna be using your BCD or your dry suit more frequently uh, to adjust your buoyancy um, because because you have more gas in your BCD to compensate for that extra lead, every time that you change depth, that extra gas changes volume more with every depth change. So that means your buoyancy is changing more with every depth change. Um, so instead of breathing the gas, you're inflating your BCD because you need to compensate for that extra lead. And then as you ascend, you're purging it more because it's expanded that much more than only a small amount of gas. Um, so you, you, you basically, you, you want to be properly weighted and try not to overweight yourself. Um, you, your, your transmitter and your computer, they don't know the difference between you inflating your BCD or breathing from your second stage. As far as it's concerned, the pressure's gone from this to this. So it, it assumes that you're breathing that. Um, if you're diving in colder waters, then you're gonna have extra equipment um, like dry suits or thicker wetsuits. Um, that is gonna increase the amount of drag that you're swimming through. The same if your equipment um, is just dangling everywhere or your trim position is off. If you're not completely horizontal, then you're just gonna be like swimming into, into water continually. Um, so you wanna be as streamlined as possible. The same with the equipment. It's all dangling off. It's all like flappy snack as it's everywhere. Then just all that extra drag in the water, you're physically going to have to do that. And your body's response to that is to increase the amount that you breathe. So your sac rate is going to increase. Um, but yeah, sheer water, um, to, to, to answer your, your questions, yeah, they, they kind of... They, they stop at like the first step, if that makes sense. They give you your sac rate um, as a, a unit of, what is it, pressure over time um, and just leave that to you. You can do with that whatever you want. Some other computers do go um, a bit further and we'll do it as um, like an, an RMV, uh, the respiratory minute volume. Um, some, uh, uh, what do you call it, like logging apps will take that information and you can input the um, the cylinder size into that and it does the calculations for you and it tells you your this is where it gets a little bit murky because some some divers define sac rate as kind of your, your respiratory minute volume uh, the, the definitions are a little murky depending on who you talk to um, the way i do it is much like shearwater does it in that yeah you've got your sac rate and the units is gonna be pressure per minute, uh, your respiratory minute volume, which will be volume per minute. And, um, and yeah, the, the, when these like third party apps download the data from your dive computer, they don't always put it in like the right place or um, define it uh, in, in exactly the same way. Um, so sometimes you can have like a sac rate, which is like ridiculously high, but it's because they're using different units. Um, they, they just, third-party apps you have to take them with a pinch of salt but it's definitely something that you can do yourself with a pen and paper um, whilst the calculation looks fairly complicated it's not um, most of the brackets are just kind of uh, yeah, the change in pressure and um, and the change in time uh, divide them and then divide it by the ambient pressure and um, yeah you you've got it um, and then you can multiply that by the uh, the internal volume over here in the uk it is pretty easy to uh, to work out cylinder volume that's how we um uh, that's how we name them and we only tend to have like 232 and sometimes you get 300 bar cylinders um but um but yeah if you're just going for like the the internal volume as if you filled up an empty cylinder with water how much water would you be able to put in it um we call them all like 12 liters is the most common and we get 15 liters and um all the way down to like small 
one liters, but three is a bit more common. Um, so try and trying to work out your your RMV is pretty easy, and and there are calculators online that you can um, that you can do that kind of stuff with as long as you've got the uh, the information. Um, but yeah, sac rate, your sac rate is it is important to like take note of it. I wouldn't like compare it to other divers um, because no one really wins in that kind of scenario it just becomes a trump card um, of people trying to get uh, like lower and lower numbers um, just focus on your own sack rate and um, and just see how yours improves or um, or like gets worse depending on different situations so yeah if if you are using a certain kind of fin kick style um, just see if that affects your um, your sack rate or like different wetsuits and different um, like BCD and the gear and whatnot. Um, or if you're like putting stuff in pockets instead of dangling off of D rings, um, just see how that affects your uh, your sack rate over an entire dive. And it's one small little thing like having your DSMB just clipped off to a D ring, but when it's in a pocket and it's much more streamlined, um, it can be surprising how much that can affect your sack rate. Uh, but I wouldn't go comparing. Um, uh, sort of to uh, to others and um, like tattooing it on yourself how proud you are of your sack rate uh, it, it's everyone breathes differently so don't worry too much about it um, but yeah any other questions uh, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video uh, use this ask mark hashtag in your comment to get it featured in an up and coming video uh, they also some of them are going in the magazine as well which is pretty cool uh, you can head over to our website scubadivermag.com check out our magazine uh, it goes out all around the world in both a digital and a physical print media if you still like a, um, a, a proper magazine to, uh, to actually flick through um, or you can do the modern thing and do a digital one um, and of course remember to head over to today's sponsor shearwater.com uh, yeah shearwater honestly make lots of very nice dive computers for a whole range of, uh, of divers uh, divers needs and um, yeah whether you're just starting out or whether you're a like, high level technical diver um, you should probably know the uh, the name Shearwater um, they're definitely one of the top dive computer brands out there so it's definitely worth checking out uh, otherwise don't forget to like share subscribe do all that good social media stuff thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving <laughs>